Now we move on to thinking and feeling. You will notice that for this preference pair, Paul is much less sure about his best fit type. Pauline demonstrates how to handle this by allowing space for the respondent to be unsure and affirming that it is their choice. Okay, Paul, um, we've now um, talked about how you like to gather information. And the next thing you're going to do with that information is you're going to make a decision. Okay. So moving on to the next pair of preferences, this is all about decision making. So we have thinking and feeling. Now, like before, some of these words um, we're using in common lay terms, and we have to be careful what they mean. For MBTI, if you have a preference for thinking, it doesn't mean you haven't got any feelings. Mm. And if you have a preference for feeling, it doesn't mean you can't think. It means whether you use thinking and feeling at the moment of decision making. Okay. okay? So it's a bit like, does your heart rule your head or does your head rule your heart? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here we have the, the head ruling the heart side of the preference. Thinking is all about um, being guided by objective logic. Um, it's cause and effect thinking and people with a preference for thinking are very um, quick to see flaws in logic. They can spot and critique something that's wrong, doesn't fit in logically. Mm -hmm. When dealing with people, they like to apply consistent principles. So everyone's treated fairly, everyone's treated the same, no favourites. And at work, people with a preference for thinking emphasise their involvement with the tasks, mm. their output. Mm. Okay. Over here, we have feeling. So this is um, your heart ruling your head. Feeling is all about decisions based on values rather than logic. So people with a preference for feeling are guided by their personal values. They focus on harmony with others and they look for common ground. They treat each person as a unique individual. So mm. it's not one rule fits all, it's who are you as a person, therefore how should I treat you? Okay. They treat everyone as a, as a unique individual. And at work, rather than an emphasis on the task, they emphasise the people side of things and they support the process and support the people. Okay. Okay. Um, just to bring this to life, I'm going to tell you a little joke, okay? So okay. Imagine, if you will, um, a mother and um, she's got two children. Now, one of the children is a thinking type and the other child is a feeling type. Okay. And unfortunately, the pet cat has just died. So Fluffy's died oh. and both children are very, very upset. The pet cat has died. And um, the child with a feeling preference says to the mother, um, did the cat go through any pain when it died? So the feeling child is thinking about the cat, empathising with the cat. What's it like to die? What does that feel like? And the mother said, no, no, Fluffy died in his sleep. He didn't feel any pain. And the feeling child then says, well, you know, where is Fluffy now? Is he with God in heaven? Again, thinking about, well, what's it like to die? What, what's after death? How can I empathise with this cat? And the mother said, yes, it's all right. Fluffy is in, God, is in heaven with God. Don't worry. At which point, the child who had a thinking preference stopped crying and said, well, what does God want with a dead cat? <laughs> so very logical. So why would God want a dead cat? So that shows the difference then between thinking and feeling. Okay, Paul, um, let's look at thinking and feeling as it's applied to you in your role now. Okay. So um, have a look at the, the list of areas there and see which one you'd like to tackle first. Okay. I think looking through the five, um, I'd like to explore decision making in more detail. Okay. And well, that's key to thinking and feeling. That's a good good place to start. Okay. So tell me how you go about decision making at work. Um, how do I go about making decisions? Um, I generally would weigh up the pros and cons um, of making that decision. Um, think about how it's going to affect uh, the team, mm -hmm. uh, myself and the company. Um, I suppose try and make uh, the right decision. Okay, so remember this isn't about making good or bad decisions. Both thinking and feeling types can make bad decisions. <laughs> and okay. good ones. Okay. It's not about um, ability or skill. It's just about the process of coming to that good or bad decision. Okay. So when you're making a decision, what's the most important thing or aspect of the decision-making process? Mm. The most important thing would be the output. Mm -hmm. So to make sure, to try and make the right decision, but um, that's the most important thing to actually measure the success of making that decision if it's been a change or something. Mm -hmm. So it's the output, definitely. Okay, and what, what if um, everybody was very upset about that decision? Would that impact on the way you made a decision? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, 
I think just from a personal point of view, that wouldn't sit particularly well with me. Um, but sometimes you have to make that decision, I guess, for the benefit of the company. Okay. Let's look at um, the impact of thinking and feeling on, on decision making. Okay. So people with a preference for thinking step out of a situation to decide objectively. Okay. They do have feelings about the, the decision, but they put their feelings to one side in order to be dispassionate and objective in that decision making. Mm. And they can use per impersonal criteria to evaluate the decisions and they focus on the tasks and the output. Mm -hmm. On the other side, feeling is about stepping into the decision to weigh things up subjectively. Mm -hmm. So they do use, involve their own feelings in the decision making process. They use empathy to connect how other people are feeling about the decision. And they do take personal circumstances into account. Mm. Rather than focusing on the task, therefore, they're focusing on relationships. Okay. So which of those two do you think you've used in your decision making at work? Hmm. Well, I think I've used a bit of both, really. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I'm quite a logical person in my decision making, but being a manager, I have to take into account personal circumstances of making those decisions. Um, and would think about the relationship, so that's that's quite a difficult one. Okay, well, um, let's look at some other areas and see if that gives us any more clarity. Okay, Paul, we've looked at some areas where you've used thinking and feeling, and it doesn't sound as if you're quite sure about this one as you have been with the others. No, Let's see what the um, MBTI reported type adds to the picture. Okay. So if you turn over the page. Yep. And I can tell you that when you answered the questionnaire, the MBTI questionnaire sorted you into the thinking category. Oh, okay. But it wasn't as confident a sort, so the clarity is only slight. Okay. So if you make a record of that, so thinking and a, s a slight um, clarity for thinking. Okay. So bearing that in mind and also all of the other um, examples that you've given me when you've used thinking and feeling that we talked about with the cards, do you feel able to sort yourself into a best fit type at this stage? Uh, I don't think so actually. Um, That's fine. Yeah, I don't feel comfortable completing that just yet because um, I'm still a little, a little bit unsure. unsure. Mm. Okay, so we'll leave that. Um, when we get to the end of the process, um, there's some other tricks up my sleeve that we can look at. But even at the end, you don't have to decide your best fit type. It's just if you feel able to, then that would be good. Okay. So let's look at um, how you use thinking and feeling in your role. Um, where do you think you use thinking particularly well in your role? The day-to-day -day management of the team, um, I'm very task-focused, um, very action-orientated. Um, so I think the team would um, be guided by my style there, I think, and we're using a thinking approach. Um, and it's very logical. Um, right. So, uh, so I think that would work. Okay. And when does thinking work less well in your role? Um, I suppose when making a decision that doesn't need um, any logic applied to it. Um, so maybe when someone's feelings are more um, involved, if there was, if a decision needed to be made um, in reference to something a bit more maybe personal. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Um, where do you use feeling quite well at work? Well, being a line manager, I'd like to think I'm um, sympathetic and empathetic. Um, yeah. I certainly try to be. Um, and I do try to apply um, personal um, I do, do try to treat each one as an individual. Right. Um, certainly if there was any issues or what have you. So I do try my hardest to, to be empathetic towards a, an individual's needs. Okay. And in which area do you think you could use feeling more effectively? Um, I think when making um, decisions that affect people, their day-to-day -day lives at work, mm. um, I suppose instead of um, maybe make, always making a logical decision based on the pros and cons, I could maybe involve um, maybe involve people's feelings a, a little bit more right. to maintain that harmony. 
Okay. Um, if you'd like to make a note of any light bulb moments you've had. Yeah. 